Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video on the Waves NX Virtual Mix Room plugin. Um, this is more or less just my first impressions. It's not a, a full tutorial by any means. I bought this plugin um, several months ago. It was on sale. I think it goes for like $100 normally. Um, I think it's on sale right now because it's around Christmas time or just after Christmas time. Um, and what it claims to do is it claims to basically uh, let you listen to 3D sound on headphones. So this is great if you're, say, at home in your home office like I am, or maybe you're using your laptop and you're outside of the studio. It's, it basically models the room. It basically creates a virtual mix room for you. So uh, I'm not really going to, again, I'm not really going to do a full tutorial on it, more or less just an overview on it and my first impressions of it. Uh, I literally just opened it and worked with it today, like like 20 minutes ago. So this is like really, really first impressions. This isn't, you know, me, oh, I've had six months to sit on it. You know, I really honestly haven't used it. And the only reason I really bought it was, well, for two reasons. One, to do a review of it, but also two, I do a lot of traveling and I can see how this would be helpful if I'm, say, in a hotel somewhere and I'm trying to get some work done. So yeah, uh, basically what you do is you put the NX plugin on your master uh, output the master bus. So I've got it right here on my master uh, stereo output after all my mastering plugins. All right, so uh, first, let's what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, bypass NX on my stereo out and let's just listen to what the original sounds through headphones without NX on it. And by the way, if you're following along, you actually want to hear the imaging uh, as I move my head around. Uh, it's probably best that you use headphones for this. So here's with without NX, with NX bypassed. All right, so that's basically how the consumer would hear it. Um, we want to hear it in a space, in, sp in a space. So um, let's throw NX on there, and here's our NX plugin right here. Um, by the way, the head tracker uh, automatically pops up when you turn on uh, when you assign the NX plugin to your master fader. So this automatically, this window automatically pops up. Um, now there's two ways you can head track. You can head track with a camera with your my um, camera on my. Uh, I'm using an iMac right now. Um, or the, the, you know, the camera on your, um, in your MacBook Pro or your, your laptop, you can do that as well. Um, you can also head track with the uh, NX Head Tracker, which is a, uh, right here, the IMU head, uh, Tracker. It's actually a device that attaches to the top of your headphones. And what it does is it tracks your head through your movement as opposed to trusting the camera. Because as you can see, sometimes the, uh, if I move a little too much, yeah, the, uh, the head tracking doesn't know what to do. So having a head tracker actually really helps, but with the amount I'm actually going to use this, I can't, I just can't justify spending $150 or whatever it is on that head tracker. So the plugin I'll buy, you know, on sale, but I'm not going to use this enough to actually use the head tracker. But that's really cool. If you, if you do a lot of mixing work on the road and hotels at airports, things like that, if you're like me and you're just a workaholic and when you go on a vacation, you literally bring your laptop with you and you work. So uh, I understand that, you know, I understand that. And it's it's a lot better than trying to uh, um, than trying to, you know, mix on laptop speakers um, in a, a hotel room. So sort of simulates uh, the st a studio or a room to work in. Um, you can also the restart button just restarts um, the head tracker up here. So I'm not going to actually do that. But one cool feature is the sweet spot. What it does is it actually when you click on it, it sets the sweet spot, basically the middle point of your speaker array. So basically, if you don't know this, the way you should set up your, your 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 sitting position when mixing is at an equilateral triangle with your speaker. So right now, hang on, right now, I'm at an equilateral triangle with my speakers. So that, and, and you, it also takes into, into consideration like the up and down, like, you know, like, do I slouch a little bit? Yeah, I do, I slouch a little bit, I don't sit up very tall. So find your natural sitting position like right here, this is where I feel comfortable. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the center of the screen. And you click on the sweet spot button. And what that does is it sets that position as your sweet spot. So that's really cool. So if you kind of slouch and you mix like I do, you know, you can you can compensate for that. So it compensates for what your natural seating position is. 
Um, all right, so let's come down here to the head modeling. Um, what this does is it actually adjusts the the way you perceive the the room based on your head size. And um, this is called the head transfer function. Um, so if you click on this little this little uh, question mark here, it actually pulls up a little document for you so you can figure this out. So uh, head related transfer function, excuse me. Um, and basically what you can do is you can measure the circumference of your head and also your inner aural arc, which is basically just the distance from um, your ear canal to the back of your head, that distance. So for me, I have a big head. It was, I'm going to go in uh, inches here instead of centimeters. Um, it was 27 inches and my inner aural arc was 11.5. So I'll type that in. So it actually takes that into consideration, takes your head size into consideration, which I find really cool. Um, so that's that. So let's listen to this now um, with NX on. And I'm going to sort of move my head around. And again, if you're listening on headphones, you'll hear the, the, the sound change as I move my head around in my mix room, my virtual mix room. <laughs> So that's really cool that it models like a 3D, uh, 3D space for us. I mean, even in, I mean, here's the thing. I, when I'm working from home, I mean, I, I typically mix in a real studio. With, uh, it's a, acoustically treated, has great speakers, is a great space already. So I don't need something like this for the studio. But if you're working from home and all you have is headphones and a laptop, this is great. It simulates working in, in a room. So when you go to the studio, you can sort of get the same or similar sound as a studio. I've obviously nothing's going to be in a like a properly acoustic, uh, acoustic, acoustically treated room. Excuse me. Um, and even at home in my home office here, I mean, there's nothing special here. I have a desk and a pair of decent monitors and a decent computer and some okay like outboard gear, but nothing special. Um, I still, I I think I'd still rather mix on speakers. But in a situation where I'm forced to use headphones, I think this is actually very very cool. Um, let's play around with the room ambience here. Basically what this does is it just adds ambience to the room. Um, if you option click in on it, you'll see that the uh, the starting value is not zero because in most studios, well in all studios, your control room, it's not the dead room. You want the control room to have a little bit of ambience in it. Not a ton, but uh, you want to have a little bit of ambience in it. It's not like an ISO booth where you want the ISO booth to have basically no ambience. Um, so let's play around with that and we'll see what that sounds like. Yeah, so the ambience, um, it's cool, but I mean, typically I'm just going to keep it low. I mean, I want to hear a little bit of, of the room in there, but not a whole lot. One thing that I wish it would do is model the size of the room because control rooms, just like tracking rooms, come in varying sizes. So um, I don't know what the size of this room is, is based upon, so it, it doesn't really tell us that. Uh, maybe when I pull up the amount, maybe that's also pulling up the size of the room. I don't know. I'm assuming not, though. All right, so other things we can do is we can adjust the speaker position up here. So if we want to have like more of like a mono sound, we could pull this together. If we want to have more of like a like a wide angle or like a far field sort of wide uh, mix, we can do that as well. Um, and you can adjust that down here as well, the speaker position. And then you can also uh, rotate all of that around you. So one of the really, really cool features about NX is that you can mix in surround on headphones, which is really, really cool. Again, you should always be checking final mixes and even working mixes on speakers. But if you're getting some of the editing work done or pre-mixing work done on headphones, there's no harm in that. If anything, you can save money that way. So 
Um, let's play around the uh, the speaker width here, the speaker position, and then we'll play or the speaker front position, and then we'll play around with the rotate knob and see how that does. And notice that the the starting value is 60 because equilateral triangle, all three angles of the triangle are 60 degrees. So, um, so we'll play around with this a little bit. I don't recommend really changing this other than to maybe listen to imaging. I would always set it back to, to 60 because that's where you should be seated in the sweet spot is at the front end or the front tip of an equilateral triangle with your speakers, so. Yeah, what I think this is really useful for is checking the imaging of your mix and the definition of your mix when it's more spread out and also when it's more compact. So it's almost a cool way to sort of check um, not different types of speakers, but almost like different, you know, like different speaker widths, you know, is someone listening to your song on a home entertainment system or are they listening to it on say, uh, a, a set of speakers that are closer together or maybe a car stereo where they're literally like this, you know, one on each door. So um, that's kind of cool that you can you can check that and just double check and make sure it sounds good in all of those positions. But uh, all in all, I'd, I'd recommend just setting option clicking and setting this back to 60. Uh, let's play around with the rotate real quick. Wow, they've really done a really good job of simulating something behind you because I was fully expecting like fully front and fully behind me to sound almost identical. And it actually sounds, it doesn't quite, I've worked in on surround mixes before, um, but it doesn't sound quite true um, to a surround mix, but man, that's really, really cool that they can, they can simulate that. Um, so many times I've told you Wow, that's really cool. Um, I'm not going to use it in surround just because I don't have a any sessions that are actually in surround. But if you do work in surround, maybe you work in you know um, editing audio or mixing audio for film or for for video that's uh, mixed in surround, I can see this uh, being an incredibly useful tool to get a lot of sort of the 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 editing and pre mixing work done first before you actually go to the studio. So um, the only last thing that's on here really is just an output volume, and that's pretty self-explanatory. So, so yeah, I mean, this is a really cool plug and it's not, again, it's not something I'm, I'm going to be using on a regular basis. Um, but in my really like hour or so that I've even, um, used it, cause I really, t I told you, I just picked it up, you know, before making this video, like 20, 30 minutes ago. Um, the only thing I can really, the, the main thing I can see myself using this for is if I'm on the road in a hotel somewhere at the airport, and I'm working. And like I said before, I'm kind of a workaholic. I will go on a vacation and I'll take my laptop with me and I'll sit and work, you know, and uh, I've done it before. Like I've seriously lugged my Mac Pro Tower and a display in a box into a hotel room with me on a 22 hour trip up to Michigan, you know, and it, halfway through my trip, I've brought my computer into the ho hotel room, like an actual like Mac Pro Tower and set it up and worked. And for someone like me, where I like to still work even when I'm out on the go, um, this is really, really useful. Or maybe you're a college student, st maybe studying audio or studying anything, and you want to be able to work while you're on a break at a coffee shop or something, you know, it allows you to really work anywhere. And it also allows you to save money. I mean, the way I my workflow works is I typically do all of my editing and pre-mixing from home right here in the office. There's nothing special here, just a computer, a good interface and some decent speakers and some decent outboard gear, nothing, nothing spectacular. And then I take that mix and I go up to a studio that has half a million dollars worth of gear and I finish the mix there and I finish the master there. So I still get the studio experience. I still get to hear all of those things in the studio that I wouldn't hear here at home in my office. And that's one of those those things about going to a studio and working is 
good speakers and a good acoustic environment, you will hear flaws in your mix that you didn't hear on headphones and that you didn't hear or at home. So this is a great alternative if you're working on the road and working on the go. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Again, just an overview and first impressions of the NX plugin. Um, nothing, you know, not a, not a structured tutorial by any means. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.